Hey everybody, Will Brink here, BrinkZone.com. Uh, today I actually want to do a review of a watch. And uh, before I do that, uh, I want to go a little bit into my background uh, on watches and interest in watches. Uh, so it makes a little more sense as the people that come to this page know me, obviously know me for mostly for my reviews and discussion on uh, nutritional supplements and anti-aging and longevity and all that. So it might be a little bit of a, a seemingly a surprise to some to see me doing a uh, review of a watch. Now, if you've been following this page, you also see that I have been doing uh, some reviews of uh, audio, audio gear, because I've been a long time a uh, lover of good music and audio file equipment and so forth. Uh, well, I did an e-bike recently. So one of my goals in the last uh, you know few years is I wanted to start doing reviews of, of other topics that, of my personal interest uh, that are not uh, nutrition supplement related. So what I'm going to do is go a little background, my thoughts on watches, how I got into it. For those that are not interested in that, I will you know timestamp where the review of, of this Picard uh, dive watch starts. So if you're not interested in that topic, but, uh, I might have a little something to add. I think the people might have some thoughts, but again, you know, if you're going to hear a review from somebody on anything, you, you probably want to know what, you know, am I just jumped into this because, you know, I, I got interested in watches yesterday or, you know, or am I someone who's actually been into watches a long time and what are my philosophies on, on watches or say watch collecting, which, uh, you know, can differ. So, uh, with that said, let me let me just give my my background and some thoughts before we get into this review. So for some context, I think may, may be of use. So I've I've been a big uh, watch fan. I'm not gonna say collector. We'll discuss what that means in a minute. But I've been a fan of watches since I was a teenager. Uh, I bought uh, I think my first watch about 18 or 19 uh, was 150 bucks, which uh, it was a Seiko sort of dress watch. I didn't know anything about watches, you know, at the time. And uh, you know that was a lot of money. Uh, a in we're talking, oh, uh, what our early eighties money. And, you know, at that age, that was a lot of money, but you know, I, I just, I just had it. remember when there were no, um, remember there were no cell phones. I mean, we actually did use watches to tell time. I mean, we still do, of course, but I mean, a lot of people, uh, mostly men, but a lot of people wear watches, uh, as much, uh, if anything, just because they enjoy the experience of, of having a watch on their wrist. They like the way it looks. Uh, I, I love, I, you know, I feel naked without a watch on. I, I get up in the morning, I put a watch on. I don't have one right now because I, I'm going to put this other watch, but normally I'd have my daily, my daily wear on from pretty much when I get up. And I, I like to tell the time that way, but a lot of people think, uh, you know, modern times, we didn't have a cell phone to look at briefly. There actually used to be for you, uh, younger folks, there actually used to be a telephone number you could call to see, see what the time was. You, I know that might sound funny today, but anyway, so just understand that, you know, at that time that watches uh, maybe played a more central role in our, in our day. But to this day, again, watches, I think are probably as popular, if not more so than ever. Uh, so people like their watches. So I, my first watch, I can say was about 18 years old and I've had watches ever since um, like, you know, any hobby, of course, you know, you, you, it wanes, comes and goes, but um, I've owned, you know, Seiko's, uh, I've owned Omega's, I've owned Rolex's, I've had uh, three Rolex's, uh, I've owned Oris, uh, I've owned JLC, I've owned Tudor, which I'll show you my, my, those watches in a minute when I kind of explain how I go about it, uh, and so forth. So I've owned, you know, I've owned quite a few watches, uh, more than, you know, I could even remember in the last, you know, 30 plus, plus years, but I'm not a watch collector. This is where, I, in, in, the way I approach watches, the owning watches, a watch as a watch enthusiast, I think maybe that is the the way to put it versus being a collector, uh, is the way I approach almost everything that I've ever owned, which is whether it's knives or uh, audio equipment or firearms or, or camera equipment. I mean, I've been a photographer on and off, break, but I mean, I've been a, a decent photographer. I, I've sold photos to the magazines uh, that I used to write for. I, I've sold a, a few prints in, in an art gallery once uh, and so forth. Uh, I own a grand total of three lenses. In fact, I think, and honestly, I think that's one more lens than I even need. So my, what I've always done in watches personally is, is I'll own, I've owned a watch, you know, and then I get well, you know, less expensive watches. Let's say starting from the beginning, I get bored of the watch or whatever, and, or they break. I mean, I said, these were inexpensive watches. And I think that I know that uh, Seiko, I broke it or I, something happened to it. 
But personally, the way I always approach watches is I, I, I don't want to collect things. I, I always want a, 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 to own a small group of things that, you know, have a role to play uh, in, in my ownership. Again, I'm going to use the word collection from now on, but I, I don't have a big collection. Um, and I would prefer always, like I say, to, to turn watches over, wear a watch or, you know, own a watch. I might have a daily wear. I might have, a, you know, I might have had something a little dressier or a little more expensive on, on special occasions. And I, over time, I prefer to uh, sell them or 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 uh, uh, trade them in. I mean, again, as you work your way up the sort of the pecking order of of watches as far as value and types, they you know you start to get to the point where they have resale value, where they where they have they may have trade in value. They you know you can sell them privately, and sometimes depending on the watch. I mean, I would just give them away. Frankly, some people I've given some watches to, um, but so <laughs> at any one time, I would never own. Uh, probably more than like three watches at a time, honestly. Uh, so there, I don't have this big like collection box to show people, but that doesn't mean like say that I haven't had actually, you know, pretty extensive experience owning a lot of brands of watches, but I, I just don't, I don't like to collect things. So that's never been a, uh, an interest to me as far as that. So my point being that if you, I show you what I, what I have and I will in a minute, and then we'll get onto the other watch um, that I, I've always, you know, my, my interest is to own a watch uh, like say, and I wear it and you get, let's say I get bored of it, or I see something else I want or whatever, uh, I will then sell it or, or trade it in or whatever versus just having a collection of watches. So you may say, well, guy, you know, he's only got, you know, uh, three watches. I mean, you know, he's not, he's not obviously not a real watch enthusiast, not a real watch collector. Uh, and I am definitely a watch enthusiast, but I am not a collector. There's the difference, I think. And like I say, uh, I do that with everything. I've always been that way. I just, I don't want, I feel like if something doesn't get used, uh, in a rotation, whether again, whether it's a camera lens, whether it's a firearm, whatever, um, it, it's as I don't want to stare at it, get, get in dust. I, to me, it's just it just it's you know it's not doing anything, so it's it's gone. So, with that in mind, uh, that's my approach to owning watches. I also think it allows, as you get again into watches that that have a little more value that you can trade in or you can sell whatever. I tend to, again like to take you know wear enjoy the watch for whatever amount of time. Sometimes it's a very short time. I, you know, I might own it a month and just be like, you know what? I don't like this watch. Um, Rolex GMT was that for me. This was years ago. I haven't, but I had a Rolex GMT, uh, and you know, I didn't like it. I, I was, I just found it boring. It didn't, it just didn't, it didn't do anything for me. And, and I ended up, I think I had that watch like a month. Um, now Rolex being what it is, the the trade in value was excellent, uh, and I brought it back, and the store knew me, and and they took it almost close to what I had put into it, and I actually ended up getting a sub. Uh, at the time. So sometimes it might be a long time. It might be a number of years where I just really like a watch and, um, you know, and at some point uh, trade it in. So there's no like rule or anything. I just as my, you know, uh, and again, like anybody, I have my my ebbs and flows with the hobby. I might not even be thinking of watches. I mean, and some people are really, really into it. They're always studying and buying and trading. I, I go through my phases, um, which is what will bring us to to the review of this, uh, this Picard uh, watch um, in a, from Spinnaker in a, in a moment. Uh, so I'll show you what I have right now and then we'll, we'll get into how, so how did I get to, uh, uh, this Picard Spinnaker? Let's, let's, let's segue into that. And maybe this will make it get a little more sense. So, uh, oh, about four or five years ago, I kind of, you know, I moved from the new England to Florida. Uh, my amount of watch hobby, uh, thing kind of, I wasn't really paying much attention to what was going on out there for watches and brands and all that. Um, so micro brands to come along. So micro brands have been around a long time, but they they seem to have really exploded. Uh, you know, in the last I don't know, I'm, I'm going to say five years or so, six years, somewhere in that ballpark where where micro brands just absolutely exploded. There's just so many of them at this point, point. Um, and so they weren't really on my radar. Uh, and lately, I just I really kind of wanted to get back into some of my hobbies. Um, and I, I started to, you know, get in, reinterested in watches and start getting back to the forums and um, and, and a brand that, you know, just uh, kept coming up was uh, this this particular brand, um, which uh, which made this particular watch, this Picard watch. Uh, and we'll get to that the background of where that comes from. But I, I really decided that I wanted to have some experience and, and, and with some micro brands. And I saw so I, again, I brands that kept uh, popping up uh on my radar and i decided you know i'm gonna i'm gonna uh buy purchase a, a couple of micro brands i've got another one coming from a company called wise which i'm really interested in that now that's again that's a brand that just keeps coming up to me so if you're not aware of micro brands i'm sure you are if you're but 
a micro brand, of course, is just as it sounds. They're small companies. They're, they're usually, you know, direct to, to consumer, you know, via the internet. They put out small numbers of watches, usually almost invariably uh, very, very price conscious watches. Not always. There are some micro brands that are actually, you know, expensive. But for the most part, that is their model, which is to put out a, a lot of watch for, for a very reasonable price. Um, but they're not, you know, name brand watches uh, that have a lot of history and provenance and, and perhaps resale value. Again, that, you know, that's another factor depending on how they go about it, whether it, it maintains a decent resale value or not. But I really just decided that I really wanted to, uh, I really wanted to experience a, a, a micro brand. So let me show you what I have right now for my quote unquote collection. And then, and then I'm going to get into talking about, you know, this particular watch and like I say it. Uh, so right now, let me, uh, Got my little box. See, this is, I literally, right now, I have a grand total of four watches, which for me is a lot of watches. Uh, the Picard is not in there. Well, that's in a separate box, uh, in which for me is actually a lot of watches. So what's going to happen is that, you know, one, if not two, are probably going to go. Uh, they're probably going to sell them or trade them in. But right now, I'm actually at the peak of my watch owning numbers. So currently, uh, I'm going to work my way up cost-wise. So right now, uh, what I do have is a Sin uh, U50. Uh, you can probably, hopefully you can. That is a Sin U50 dive watch. Uh, always wanted a German watch. I've, I've always been interested in Sin, um, specifically their, their U1, which, but I didn't get a U1 because then they were kind of big. Uh, and so when they offered the U50, which is basically a scaled, more or less a scaled down version of the, of the U1, uh, I just had to have one. So this is my newest watch. I just actually got this. This has been my daily wear for, I don't know, about a month. Uh, I just got this guy and I, I really love it. Uh, it's it's just a fabulous watch. It is everything I was hoping it would be. Um, not inexpensive, but uh, still in the realm of of uh, reasonable for most people. I just I really like the the technology that Sin uses, but this is not a review of Sin. So I'm going to get rid of that guy. All right, next watch up the line. Now this guy has been my daily wear uh, for this is actually for for a while. And it's one of the longest daily wear watches I've owned. This is a a, a two door uh, back bay black, uh, and I love this watch. Fantastic watch. I think Tudor is uh, definitely still one of the best deals going in in the luxury uh, luxury segment. It's to watch collector types who you know spend a lot of money. It's on the probably on the lower end for some people. It's a lot of money. Problem about watches is uh, like cars and audio and stuff. It's expensive is a relative term uh, to what you have and what you want to spend. But my daily wear basically has been this has been this Tudor Back Bay Black and uh, love this watch. Uh, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with it uh, because this sin has sort of become my daily wear. Uh, we'll see. Um, and finally, uh, my reference watch, this this was a grail watch for me, really, um, is this Jaeger Lukutra uh, Master Chronograph Dive. Uh, hopefully you can see that guy. And 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 that I, that is the, that watch, this is, that's really like my, uh, you know, my, my going out watch, going to conferences, meetings, uh, seminars. I just, when I really want something to just that extra, that extra look, that extra feel, I, this is just to me, you know, this is, this was a grail watch for me. Um, this is the, the longest, this watch I've owned longer than any watch I've ever owned. This is, I've had this watch about 20 years. Uh, and you know, occasionally I will give it a look and think, um, you know, about trading it or selling or something. I just can't bring myself to do it. Uh, this watch, I just don't think I'll ever, I'll ever part with. You will also note, uh, you may notice that I only have dive watches. Um, that is not, was actually intentional. It's just, I like tool watches. Uh, dive watches are obviously by definition, a tool watch. I like rugged tool watches that have a real purpose to them that will take abuse. Not that I give them abuse, but frankly, I just, I like anything that more or less is going to be, uh, bullet close to bulletproof. I like the way, of course, dive watches look, but I, I get them again because I just, Something about dive watches just always, uh, you know, appeals to me that the the fact that they're rugged, that they they can, you know, obviously go underwater. They can, you can, you know, if they bump into things, smack into things, nothing's going to happen to them. And I have always liked dive watches. Every time I've tried getting something else, now there are of course tool watches that are not dive watches, but you know, there's there's field watches. Uh, there's a couple of sort of watches that are specialize in sort of uh, being shockproof and all that with some water resistance and, you know, but somehow I always just come around to dive watches. So that's basically my background on watches, my interest in watches. I'm not an expert uh, on watches per se, as far as, you know, high horology movements and all that. Uh, I know what I like. I think I've got a pretty good handle on, on uh, what's what, and what's brands. Um, so decided to that, let's say my next, my next uh, uh, own, ownership of, of watches. I really wanted to uh, own a, a micro brand. 
and the this this particular watch uh, and, and warning, I got to give you another warning also about this particular video. This is not going to be a, a professional video as far as, you know, these really great close up shots of the watch where, you know, all the great angles are shown. Uh, there are some other, there's some great videos online and photos of this watch for you. To, if you want to go look at that, this is not going to be one of those videos, frankly. Um, you're going to have to uh, go find uh, another video. If you really want to see all the details, I'm going to just going to have to, you know, cover the details of this guy. But so Spinnaker uh, is is definitely a micro brand that's been on people's uh, radar. Um, and what popped up, I don't remember even where I saw it, but was the, the Spinnaker Picard. Now, the Spinnaker Picard is based on the, the Ro a Rolex Deep Sea that came out in the 60s. Uh, it did, wasn't sold. It was a, sort of a one of, but it was a, a proof of concept watch for uh, for Rolex. Rolex basically took uh, this watch and put it on the outside of a submarine uh, with an adventurer named Picard. This is why they call it that. And the submarine went to the uh, deepest point uh, of the planet, which is the Marianas Trench, which is, I think, about 17,000 feet, give or take. Uh, I was the deepest point on the, on the planet, and it was it was attached to the outside of the submarine. It survived. It was still ticking, which you know, especially we're talking 19, early 60s, that was pretty, uh, pretty amazing. I mean, if you look at a picture of the actual watch, it's, it's, it's kind of a silly looking watch. But again, um, it showed that, uh, that Rolex, you know, had a, a real um, uh, legit focus on, on an ultra tough tool watches that could go anywhere and do anything. So this watch is, is based on that. And now also below the video, I will put all the stats and all that. So, you know, if you're asking what kind of steel is being used, uh, and all that movement. We'll get into that, but uh, it'll all be below. So again, I, I, I think I think that the videos uh, where somebody goes into great details about materials and all that, it, yeah, I don't, I just find them a little boring. And I'm saying that that's easy to look up. I, I want to give you my impressions through this watch. Um, so I'm going to give you a share. Here's a close up. All right. So here is a close up of this. Now, you're not going to be able to see very well on the camera because look at that. Okay. There, look at that dome crystal. Uh, on this watch, it, it it's crazy. However, uh, again, this is the that domed crystal is basically uh, based on the look of the original uh, Rolex watch, and of course, it is designed for extreme depths. Um, this is a big watch, as you can see. Um, I'm just going to go through. So basically, th this is the is is rated to 550 meters. We'll talk about that in a minute. So I'm going to talk about the. Um, so, all right, so they got the dome crystal. You have this extremely large, as you can see, uh, body. It has a helium release valve in it. Uh, let me get my uh, let me get my quick notes here. So I gave you the history of the watch. It is basically, it's, it's, it is basically an homage uh, to the Rolex. It's not a knockoff. It is definitely, it is a, definitely it's its own watch. I mean, th that the dome crystal is pretty much, honestly, the only thing that's a really obvious uh, uh, nod to, uh, to that Rolex. And of course, the fact that it is based on the, uh, on the adventure of Picard and the, all that. Um, so the overall impressions of it are, are my, this is my first exposure to, uh, uh, to a micro brand. I am absolutely just blown away by this watch, the value for money on, on, a, on this watch. Uh, and I think, again, I think, uh, Spinnaker is kind of known for that, but in general, uh, the good, the good micro brands, this is their forte, but we're talking about a watch here of, uh, using, you know, premium materials here. This is not, this is not cheap stuff they're using here. This is, uh, um, uh, 316 stainless steel. Um, you're talking about a double coated large, um, crystal. Um, this, you know, it's basically a big old hunk of, a hunk of metal here. Um, hold on, let me get it. Sorry. So this is, this is, if you were to take this watch and you were to put a name brand on this, you know, a big name brand, this watch would go for considerably more money. This comes in around $500, give or take. Um, I cannot really say, you know, anything, anything negative. The body itself is, if you look up close, I mean, the fit and finish of this watch is outstanding. The bracelet is outstanding. It's all milled. Um, let's see. The back of it, you can see the back of it, which you won't be able to see as far as me, but it's basically a, a it's obviously a CNC picture of the submarine itself uh, that Picard went down in. The uh, movement, uh, as far as the, um, as far as the ratcheting, as far as the bezel is is very very tight. It's it's extremely well done. Um, if I'm talking about the clasp, I mean the clasp 
is is again really really well done. It's a double. It's a double. I'm going to put it on. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit of how it works on you know wears on the wrist. Now I've got little wrists. They're 6.5 inches. Now this guy, you know, I'm sorry. I know this is not a professional. You are all going to be like, oh my god, this is the most unprofessional uh, video of a watch we've ever seen in my life. And you're right. And I'm sorry, but. This watch, considering my little wrist, you will notice the lugs do not overlap. Uh, if you look at the actual dimensions of this watch, I mean, it, it sounds bigger than it wears. Now, let's be honest. This is not a daily wear watch. That's, that's something we have to talk about. This is, a, this is a fun watch. This is a conversation starter. This is a statement, sort of bold statement watch uh, that you're having, some, you know, you're having fun with. And, and um, I haven't really worn it much, uh, honestly, so far. It's um, really just been in the box. I mean, this is pretty much it right now. I've Got my new Sin watch. I've been enjoying that. But all right. So on the on the wrist, it actually does not wear nearly as big and bulky as you you know as you might think. But this is a big watch. I mean, let's you know, there's no way to slice this. But the the uh, the clasp again. I was expecting uh, honestly for this kind of money, I was expecting a at least a cheapy you know maybe stamped clasp. I was looking really looking hard on this watch for you know where were they cutting corners and and we'll get to where the obvious place they cut corners. Uh, was is the movement, of course, and that's that's the obvious place. But as far as fit, finish, quality, the the brush steel, the um, integrated, the way the 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 body of the watch, if you see, it integrates into the case. This really is impressive. I have to say, I am blown away. I I, I really am, and maybe I'm because I'm new to the micro thing. This is old news to some people, but you know, I have had watches that cost fun, way more than this, five times, ten times, whatever. Uh, that did not impress me as far as much as this watch does, as far as the fit and the finish, uh, the small details, uh, which hey, there's other videos that really get up close and give you really good, good visuals. And I know you're, I know you're hope you're not rolling your eyes too badly on this. Uh, I can't say enough about that. So let's talk about uh, the movement. So the movement is a, is a Seiko NH35 uh, TMI automatic, and it's a very typical movement used in micro brands. Uh, some people have, you know, honestly made some, some noises about it that they felt, um, uh, Spinnaker maybe shortchanged the, the watch a little bit. Uh, I, I don't agree. I mean, so what do you want? This is a tool watch. I think people, when you own tool watches for the most part, especially in a particular price segment, um, you know, what is it you want from a, a tool watch? Well, the movement in a tool watch should be, uh, uh, rugged. It should be reliable. It should be easy to service uh, as far as I'm concerned, and it should be accurate enough for government work, okay? Uh, and the the NH35 does all that and does that brilliantly. It is it is a very robust, uh, uh, dependable movement, uh, which is what you want, I think, in a tool watch. It is easy to service uh, or replace if you had to, and it's act perfectly accurate enough. I mean, you know, again, watch people, uh, you know, tend to, tend to chase accuracy, and I, I understand that. Um, but to be honest with you, again, at this price point, again, what, what do you really want from a, a tool, a diving tool watch? It, it is really fine for that. It does a good job. Uh, no, it's not, you know, the smoothest gliding second hand uh, that you're going to get, you know, high beat type movement and all that. Now, you know, I think that uh, one thing I think uh, Spinnaker could do with this watch, the only thing that I think they could do to improve this watch would be maybe to offer a higher end movement at a, at a different price for those that really want it, you know, for people that are willing to spend a little more money. I think that would be, that's about the only thing that I could recommend. The only thing that I have seen uh, on some of the forums and stuff were comments that they liked everything about it, but they, they felt the movement, you know, uh, just uh, didn't, didn't justify uh, the ownership or price. And I, I'd like to say, I don't really agree, but I will say that if you are looking for a, a highly reliable, robust, easy to service movement. That is definitely what you're getting with this watch. And I, I think that's, you know, in that price point, especially talking around $500, this, the build quality of this watch is just off the charts. Uh, I can't say that enough. I really can't. So conclusion wise, um, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you my two, my two uh, negatives. I mean, obviously it's got to be negative. There's no positive about everything. Uh, my, and my two negatives of, of this watch uh, both of which are completely irrelevant. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna correct myself before I even get into my own what I feel are the potential negatives of this watch. Um, and I do want to actually, I'm gonna back up just a little bit. I have one more point I want to make, and then we're gonna get in my negatives, and then off we go. Um, I would like to say again, this is a big watch, but again, I am, I was really, really impressed again with the the ergonomics. You see, such a big watch. 
you know, when the when the uh, Rolex Deep Sea Dive came out, um, you know, I, I I saw pictures of it and I thought it was really a, a just a beautiful sharp watch. And again, I like tool watches. I like rugged watches. Uh, and I went to see one in the store and I put it on my wrist and it looked awful. Uh, it, to me, to you know, to me, Rolex just put absolutely no thought into the ergonomics of this watch. The big big bubble back. It sits up on your wrist. The 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 Rolex Deep Sea uh, is a big watch that wears big, and on a smaller wrist, uh, it looks terrible. It just, I didn't like it at all. And so I was actually kind of excited, but I would like to say that again, really props to, to uh, Spinnaker for making a big watch that really does take into account some real attempt at ergonomics. Look at the, look at the, the, the shape on it and the lugs and how the, um, you can see, yeah, you can see how that band basically integrates right smoothly into that. Uh, and I just want to say props to them for that because again, Rolex uh, made, from what I could tell, absolutely no. <laughs> unless you're just, if you're a big person with a big wrist, uh, that that deep sea dive is just going to look terrible on you. All right. So my negatives, my only two negatives about this watch, uh, and both of them again, I'm going to correct myself to say both of them are completely irrelevant. And one is my own fault, my own doing. The other one has really doesn't matter, but you'll see what I'm talking about. All right. Issue one: color. This was supposed to be. Uh, the blue watch. There's a green, a blue, and a, and basically a black. Now the pictures. If you go and look at the the pictures, the representation pictures uh, on on their site, it, it's a very different blue. I was expecting a much lighter blue. Honestly, um, you know, if in the right light, it's it's like a really really dark navy, and and that's on me. I mean, who can I blame but myself for that? You know, uh, but I don't know about you, but I mean, that looks quite black to me, and. I think if I was holding the black one right next to it, maybe you could you could tell. But my only disappointment was I at first when I first got it, I actually thought maybe they'd sent me the wrong watch. But anyway, that's on me. Uh, it's still a not, really good looking watch. It's very sharp. It, it, it's very legible. Uh, obviously, on video, that that crazy domed sapphire uh, lens it, it looks like you wouldn't be able to see it, but it just doesn't video well. But in person, very legible. Uh, loom. Let's go with the loom uh, again. I have to admit, sorry, I'm I'm jumping around a little bit. Um, loom is phenomenal. I've never seen loom that bright. Uh, it is brighter than any of my other watches that I've ever owned. It is brighter than the Jaeger Lacoutre dive watch. It is brighter than the two door is brighter than the, uh, uh, anything I've ever owned. I really, they did it. The super, uh, Lumina uh, is very well done. It is very robust. It, you know, you're out for a minute, you come inside and it's just glowing at you. You'll love the loom. If you're a loom person, I'm not honestly, uh, not that I don't want nice loom. I'm just saying it's not like a make or break thing for me with a watch. So that's why I didn't jump in. Um, all right. I'm going to take a quick look at some notes. Then I'm going to give you my two negatives. So I gave you my one negative, the color that's on me. And the other negative again is, is completely irrelevant. Uh, 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 but I'm going to, I'm going to be honest about the one, the one thing jumps out at me a little bit. Okay. So the depth rating of this watch is 550 meters. So first I want to say that that is exceeds what any human being can dive to anyway, right? So first, let's be straight that most people that own dive watches don't dive, uh, including me. The people that do wear dive watches and dive, uh, the vast majority of them are within 100 feet. That is pretty standard for most casual divers, even semi-serious divers, you know, regular divers, 100 feet is usually about as deep as they go. The percentage of people that are wearing dive watches that are going below 100 feet, going deeper than 100 feet are tiny. The percentage of people that are going below 300 feet, you know, or, or, you know, infinitesimal. You see where I'm going with this. The point, the fact is at, at 550 meters depth, this exceeds any depth is already, I think the world record is about a thousand feet. I believe it's give or take a thousand feet. So this watch, you know, the rating on this watch exceeds that by a long shot. So what am I complaining about? I'm going to be, again, I want to be honest about my, what I kind of bums me out a little bit about this watch. With that okay, with that much metal and the a lens, crystal lens that big, and this you know, big honk and sc screw on case back and all that, this should be a thousand meter watch all day long, uh, if not more so. I mean, but honestly, minimum. Um, let me let me, and I'm going to give you a little compare, a little bit of unfair comparison, but I just want to be you know. So this sin, look how thin that sin is. That sin is a 500 meter rated die watch. The difference between this guy and this guy is 50 meters. Now, being a little unfair here because the sin is actually about, probably 
uh, I can't even think of another 500 meter rated dive watch that is that thin. Most of them are not that thin. But again, they are usually a hell of a lot thinner than that. Um, so, you know, if you're going to buy a, a big honking dive watch with that much metal and, a, and a, uh, that, that big and that thick that is based on a watch that went to the Marianas Trench, I really have to admit that I would have expected a thousand meters, if not more so. Honestly, if, I mean, I think the purpose of a watch, again, when you're talking about this big, you know, there's some bragging rights to this. I mean, you know, why are you wearing this giant watch? I mean, it looks it looks kind of cool and it's kind of fun. But at the end of the day, I, 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 I've got to admit, I would want to say, you know, well, one of the reasons I love this watch is because, it, you know, it'll it'll go down to 2000 meters or, you know, again, if you go look at the deep sea dive, if you go look at some of the other extreme dive watches, the, the, the numbers are, are a lot higher than this. Now, there's more to depth ratings than just a lot of metal uh, and, and uh, dome crystal stuff. Obviously, there's gaskets and there's some engineering that goes into it. But I just want to be straight up and tell you that that that's the part that bothers me a little bit only in that uh, I just well, you're going to like say the, the entire purpose of a big honking extreme dive watch is an extreme rating. And this is a above average rating. Most dive watchers, you know, two to three hundred meters is pretty typical. Uh, but the anything in the sort of the extreme uh, rating is going to be a thousand plus. So that's really it. Uh, it has no bearing on your life. Uh, you know, you're going to swim around. It's not going to matter. But those are the two things that I would, you know, that bother me a little bit. Um, so bottom line, am I going to keep it? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I, I've got four watches. I've got another one, another micro brand coming in. I'm not sure. I'm 50, 50 when I'm going to keep this guy. Cause again, I'm not a collector. Uh, this basically puts me at four. I'll have a fifth watch. Uh, I don't see myself getting rid of the sin. I don't see myself getting rid of the two door. Certainly not the JLC. We'll see. Anyway, that's my report. Um, sorry. I don't have like really cool close up video and all this guy, uh, but they exist. And uh, I'd, I'd go take a look at them. I would, uh, I, you wouldn't go wrong. I mean, if you want a big statement honking, big old cool looking watch, it really says something different. I mean, again, this, this is a, a, a an homage to, to the uh, Rolex. It's not a knockoff. I don't mind. Uh, I mean, one thing, again, I have to say about Spinnaker is that unlike a lot of watches, uh, they really are trying to design watches that, that are their own design. And, and you have to say, there's not, I cannot think of too many watches, if any, that really look like this. So, uh, I recommend it. Uh, highly recommended. Uh, the price point for value is is just off the charts. I, I it kind of blows me away. And I, again, I'm kind of new, so maybe I'm just so new to the micro brands that uh, that uh, it's old news to some of you. But I, 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 I this this thing. If you were to, again, if you were to put a, a brand name on it, maybe maybe use a slightly a, a more sophisticated or, or higher end movement would be way more expensive and compete with anything out there as far as fit, finish, quality materials. Uh, you know, all the fine little details and all that. So there's my report. I hope this helps you all. And uh, if you like this, you know, give me a like and a thumbs up and all that. And uh, I'll see you all on the Brink Zone.